And there we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Alex Plant. I'm a librarian. Um, I normally would say at this point at um, in the Gabert Library down in Journal Square uh, most of the time, um, and I still am. Um, it's just now that we are mostly online, it's kind of um, silly to say I'm at one library or the other. Um, and I'm very excited to um, kick off this series. So we are gonna be doing this series every week. Um, we're gonna be highlighting different tools that the library um, is giving our students access to um, basically from now until the end of the semester. So for um, today's first um, uh, series, we're gonna be taking a look at two tools that I'm very excited about that I think can really help not only um, students, um, faculty, but also our staff. Well, like I was saying, I'm very excited to kick this one off because the two tools that we're going to take a look at today are LinkedIn Learning and Rosetta Stone. So some of you might be familiar uh, with these two tools from, you know, the, the rest of your life. Um, so LinkedIn Learning, a lot of us know LinkedIn because LinkedIn is, um, it's kind of the world's premier net online networking space. It's a place where you can put your resume up, um, interact with um, different um, people who are working, um, you know, either their co-workers or yours, former co-workers, maybe they're people you'd like to work with, right? Um, and you can get a little bit of information about places that you'd like to work at. It's a place where you can find job postings. It's also a great resource to just generally learn um, good skills, both hard and what we call soft skills, to kind of put, elevate you a little bit more in your career. And what they've done is over the last couple of years, they have um, purchased a uh, learning platform called lynda.com and they've slowly ingratiated it into their own platform. So now when you're on LinkedIn, um, you can actually move over into that LinkedIn learning. So what the college did or what the library actually did is we use part of our budget to um, basically make these tools freely available to our students. Um, so we're gonna take a look at LinkedIn learning and then we're going to shift um, gears ever so slightly and take a look at a little bit more specific learning platform, which is Rosetta Stone. And Rosetta Stone, you may have heard of. They've been around for many, many years. Um, they are a language learning. They used to be a software. Um, and you would actually get CD-ROMs, right, to put onto your computer. But now they've shifted a little bit, um, and they are primarily a um, online or a cloud-based learning platform for languages. So we'll also, um, the library also went ahead and bought access to that platform as well. So that's where you would be specifically learning language. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting off on the library website. So if any of you are unfamiliar with where that is, that is library.hccc.edu. You can see it up here in the address bar. And here we are. What we've done, we've given the website um, a, a facelift, and um, all I can do is thank the tech team at the library so much for doing this because it's really made the library website a lot more user friendly and kind of brought it into line with the way that other libraries' websites look. It's also made it super easy for students and faculty and staff to find our resources. So I want to highlight this section down here where we are using these nifty little icons to let you know um, what you might expect to find in this section. Specifically this one with the little I, it's called our e-resources page. So if you click here, we're going to be taken kind of to the, our main um, page that we put together specifically for distance learning in the age of COVID so that students could kind of very easily find um, some of our digital offerings. Um, you know, not just how to find a book online or how to find an article online, but some of the other offerings that we have. So you'll notice here on our left-hand side where you've listed out what some of those offerings are. So newspapers, Overdrive, uh, our magazines, but then also our tools down here. So we're going to be looking at LinkedIn, um, and Rosetta Stone. So I'm going to start with LinkedIn because it's a little more involved, I would say, than, um, than Rosetta Stone. And here we are. What we've done is we've created um, user guides to get you started. So I'm going to show you where those user guides live. They're accessible right from this little window, this little box down here. 
Um, there's a little discussion over here about what LinkedIn Learning is. Um, it features thousands of videos, tutorials, and training resources that are about business, that are about technology, as well as creative skills that you might need. Um, we have free access to LinkedIn Learning through the library, um, so it doesn't matter who you are, as long as you have that hccc.edu um, email address, you can access this. So what do we do? I'm going to start here from what we call our research guide or our user guide. It's totally worth the five minutes or so that it would take to read through this, especially if you are getting started, which we are today. The way that you access LinkedIn Learning. So if you just logged into your LinkedIn account, if you already have one, you wouldn't necessarily be able to access LinkedIn Learning through HCCC. Um, what we want you to do is click through this link. So we've provided this link in a couple of places, right? There's click here and then under the how to access Access, it's down here as well. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to push you through to um, one of our portal pages where you would log in with your HCCC uh, credentials. That's your email address and your password. Like you would log into the portal or like to check your email or something. It would be those credentials. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So I'm clicking in. Oh, I can see I've already been logged in. Um, let me see if I can just see if I can sign myself out. And let's do that again so that you can see what that looks like. Well, this is my LinkedIn password. I've already connected myself. So um, basically what normally would happen there is you would get a white page and it would just say HCCC email and HCCC uh, password and you would just enter those in and then you would um, then you would log into LinkedIn and everything would be synced together. So it's fairly straightforward. It explains how to do it right here. If you do not have a LinkedIn um, password, it's actually going to prompt you to create one as well. So let's say you've never created a, a, a LinkedIn page before, you do actually need one in order to access the, the tools or the learning platform, um, but you can do it very quickly. It'll ask you if you're a first time user. If you don't have that LinkedIn page, you can click first time user. It's going to walk you through a very quick setup to get that page set up. And if you do actually have LinkedIn, it's going to have you um, link those two accounts. Okay. So it's very clear and straightforward, but let's get to the fun part, which is what's actually available on the platform. So I really enjoy LinkedIn learning because it is, um, it allows you to one, explore um, what types of skills you want to learn a little bit more about, but what's also very cool about it is that it allows you to save things. So you can, for instance, um, get on a roll and say, I want to learn about, you know, project management. I want to learn um, web development. I want to learn, um, you know, how to, uh, how to do public speaking, for example. So you can go kind of browsing for all of those different topics. And then, you know, I don't know how many hours of a day you have to devote to LinkedIn learning, but I maybe only have 30 minutes or so. So what I can do is I can go ahead and I can save all of those. So what does that look like? Well, let's take a look at your main page here. So they're going to ask you to set up a weekly goal, which is kind of nice. Um, I never actually complete my weekly goal ever. I kind of do things in like short little spurts kind of sporadically, but they'll kind of let you know, hey, doing 30 minutes a day or 30 minutes um, a week is, is kind of uh, good for you. So you can set this goal. They keep, they say, you know, do um, 30 minutes. That's kind of the one that everybody's recommended, but you can see you can do a less amount of time or you can go all the way up to 120 minutes. You can also remove the goal if that makes you anxious. I know sometimes seeing a goal that you're not hitting all the time can make people a little anxious. So it's totally up to you. So what you, can you do now? Well, I have a couple of things that I've already started. So you can see that I have this in progress over here. So let's say you get started working on something and then you need to, you know, pause. Um, you go and you do a couple of things, a couple of days go by and you're like, oh, geez, I was, I was doing something in LinkedIn that I really want to get back into. Well, you don't have to go and search for it again. It's going to tell you what you already have in progress and you can jump right back into it. Once you save something, it's also going to show you um, what, programs you've uh, totally saved. And we don't um, use this very much, but if we decided to, um, as an organization, put in certain trainings that we felt like people um, at the organization would want to, uh, you know, engage in, that's that would pop up here. So we don't have anything here yet, um, but who knows, maybe in the future we will, or maybe you could suggest something and we could put it in there. 
Um, additionally, it kind of gets to know you a little bit based on what you do, right? So you have your LinkedIn profile actually connected. So it kind of has an idea of what you do already um, because you put in your work experience and your work history in there. And so it might make suggestions to you. It also might just make suggestions for what is popular, what people are engaging with right now. So those are these recommendations that um, show up. Of course, they also show what's trending, what are people working on right now, um, you can see, you know, remote work, right? That's a popular one right now. So I'm sure a lot of people are watching that. Um, a lot of people are rethinking their career, right? So, um, you know, this is sort of a, a more of a, a, a brainstorming type of uh, program that you would be engaging in how to develop your career, right? Those are the things that are trending, what people are looking at right now on LinkedIn Learning. And then, of course, they have popular. Um, again, they're looking at people in your with your particular role, what they might be looking at. At, you know, and other, um, you know, as you kind of go down, it kind of reminds me of like, it's like the Netflix of learning, right? Um, they have all these different categories now based on things that you've looked for. But let's say you want to get started. You're brand new here. You don't have any, um, uh, you don't have any plans right now, right? You're not engaged in any courses and you want to get started. I find it easiest to come up to this browse button. Now, browsing is really nice because what they've done is they basically take popular courses or popular themes and you can click into these themes and then see all the different courses that kind of fall under that either subject term or that theme. And they've gone and they've divided them up according to what is what would be essential for business, what is essential for a creative, and then what is essential for technology, right? So business is going to have um, maybe a lot of planning, a lot of strategy, career growth, um, you know, resume stuff, things like that is going to be within business. Creative is going to be um, maybe a little bit more with uh, getting acquainted with design tools, right? Getting uh, acquainted with um, uh, graphic design, multimedia design, those types of things are going to be, are going to fall with under the, underneath the creative. And then technology is going to be exactly what you think it is. It's going to probably focus a little bit more on analytical uh, platforms, um, maybe pathways to becoming a certain type of um, career, you know, joining a certain type of career, but it's also going to have your classic software as, as well. So you might see kind of some overlaps between business, creative, and technology, right, because everybody is kind of going to be engaging with some type of software, right? So let's go ahead and take a look just at, at um, how you would use one of these browse topics. So coming into business, um, let's say you're interested in um, maybe a uh, growing um, your ability to lead a team. Maybe you're moving into a new position where you might have um, a direct report underneath you. You might want to look under the subject of leadership and management. And when you come in here, it's not just going to be one um, you know, program that fits all for leadership and management. Instead, what they're going to do is they're going to um, give you um, ability to filter and refine your search. So of course, they're going to come up with all the results that have leadership and management under there. And then you can kind of refine it as to what you want. Okay, so maybe you're interested in building collaboration in your team. You can click that. And now you've refined your results down to specifically those videos or those courses that are going to focus on team building, collaboration within a team, working within a team, those types of topics, okay? And then let's say you're just interested in um, a couple of videos, right? You can go over here to type click videos, and now you're just going to be looking at individual videos. That's great, and that might be a, a good way to kind of get your feet wet and get started, but I suggest that if you're going to be um, interacting with this platform, you should use it for what it was originally built for, which was to actually guide you through a particular course or path. So there's, there's two um, things that you can do here. Courses, right? So a course is um, someone actually developed a course that kind of takes you through a couple of modules um, to, you know, designed around a particular theme. So in this case, this course is Teamwork Foundations. If you click in here, you'll see over here your contents, right? And it's going to lead you through what this guy is going to be teaching you on, right? So here's in each module, right? They're numbered one through three. 
got a four, right? They're going through. And then these are all sort of the sub videos that are within that, okay? You can click on the overview and get an idea of who's gonna be talking to you, right? You can see him on LinkedIn, right? Of course, because everybody's gonna have a LinkedIn page. Um, and then it's gonna give you some information. So important to know is what level you're at, right? So you're a beginner. Um, I think that's where probably most of us are going to be starting. It's going to let you know what you can get, what you um, can hope to get out of this, and then what the learning objectives are. And again, this is self-paced, so you can consume this as quickly or as slowly as you'd like to. Maybe you have a little bit of experience with leadership and, and um, team building, right? And so you can skip to um, the parts that are most relevant to you because they're new to you or they're areas where you know you need to work on and you don't necessarily need need to start with, you know, module one, you know, video one, what is a team, right? So again, it's very much self-paced and self-directed. And then once you interact with this, it will show up on that main page like I had under, you know, what do you actually have in progress, okay? I just want to show you a couple of other um, things. Let's just go into, how about this one? Let's stay with the leading um, topic leading remote. And let's, um, let's interact with some of those, um, like I want to say, build a library for myself that I want to engage with. Um, you can actually go right here and see, um, click on this little, like, I don't know what you would call this, like a little flag or a tag or something like that. And that's actually going to allow you to save this, um, this course. So you can click on that it's saved and now you'll be able to find it underneath your saved program. So maybe you can't interact with this right now, but in the future, you, you don't wanna to have to go searching and looking for it again. Now it's gonna be saved in your library and you have access to it. Um, additionally, um, what's nice about LinkedIn is they've got a lot of money behind them so that they can really um, kind of make this um, as a uh, uh, you know, compliant and user-friendly as possible, there are transcripts to the video. So um, if it's easier for you to say read and listen, right, or maybe you prefer to just read and not really listen to what they have to say, depending on what your learning style is or what your needs are, you have those transcripts as well. You have a notebook where you can take notes as you're watching the video. These will save and you have access to look at them. They're just for you. Nobody else sees them, right? It's your own personal notebook. And then there's a little section for Q&A. So other people can kind of, um, now these are more, these are public. So if you have a Q&A, you know, this will be seen by other people and it will be seen by the person who created it. So if you have a question, um, you can interact with the person who actually created it. All right. So that is LinkedIn Learning. Um, I would honestly say some of the hardest parts about LinkedIn Learning is probably just getting it set up because if you need to, for instance, set up a um, LinkedIn account, that's gonna take some time right at the beginning just to get started. But in terms of actually um, finding a, uh, a relevant course or some relevant videos, it's pretty easy. It's very user friendly. Um, if you choose not to use the browse source and you're looking for something very specific, you can use the search bar up here, right? I'm very interested in project management. So I've searched for it a, a couple of different times. And again, I'm still being brought to this very similar results page where I can then continue to, you know, go and filter. I can filter because I'm very much a beginner, right? I, my time is a commodity right? And I can filter there. So that is LinkedIn Learning. I'm going to move on to uh, Rosetta Stone. So I'm going to start back at the main page of the library just to keep things um, in some semblance of a structure so that we're all starting from the same place. We're going to go back into that e-resources uh, e page, click into it, and you have Rosetta Stone. Now you might have noticed, right, when we were at LinkedIn Learning that Rosetta Stone was right under it. Um, they kind of, they're very similar, right? They're both learning platforms. So similarly, right, um, we have a little description here. Um, this is again, open to everyone with that uh, HCCC email. Um, and it's a platform that is language learning based. So I think there's something like 30 plus languages um, that you have varying levels of, you know, very beginner introductory all the way up to more skilled and advanced levels that you could participate in. So 
it runs quite the gamut of um, learn, you know, uh, levels of learning. Um, and the nice thing is you can in, be involved in several, you know, learning several different languages at a time. It not, it's not necessarily um, you have to learn one language, finish it, and then start the next one. So it's a little, it's nice and fluid like that. Again, we have a little starter guide for you to get up and running. I actually think Rosetta Stone is slightly easier um, to get started with. Um, and one of, again, one of our wonderful techs actually went and did a step-by-step, -step, how do you actually get started with Rosetta Stone? They also have a list of the available languages. Um, this may change right? Because Rosetta Stone is always adding um, things and we're not necessarily updating our uh, guide at the same rate that Rosetta Stone is updating. But as of right now, these are our available languages. Um, and again, I, I have a feeling that when I click on uh, this solution, it's not going to take me to this, uh, this login, but this is what the login would normally look like for a new user. You're going to have to log in like you would it, logging into anything else for the school. Um, so let's go ahead and click on the link here to get started. So if you're a first time user, I'm not a first time user, um, but I am going to um, I'm going to log in here to show you what it looks like. I'm using my um, HCCC email. Okay. And now I have a different password. So that first portal page, you're going to use your HCCC credentials. And then here, if you're a new user, you're going to create a new one. Now, for ease of use, and I don't know, somebody from IT might slap me on the hand and tell me that this is bad, but for ease of use, you might want to just use the same password that you use to log into school. And then you come down here and you pick a language that you want to learn. So in the past, I've picked um, French, but maybe for today, I'm going to uh, select German so that we have something, something kind of new. Uh, to look at. So here's what happens. You reach this interstitial page, okay, where um, it basically is just asking you to now move into the Rosetta Stone site. So what I do is I say I want to launch Rosetta Stone Foundations. And then here I am. It's very straightforward. It welcomes you. And the first thing it says to you is, okay, you've picked German. Now, what would you like to start with? Okay, so there's extended um, with reading intro. Okay, um, there's all these other options down here. Now, I'm choosing um, extended with reading because I'm very new. I'm not really interested in writing German necessarily. Um, I just want to kind of get a primer in it. So you select what you want and then you get started. You'll notice now, right, you get, you start with your basics. If you've ever been in any kind of language learning, right, this should look very similar to say the textbook, right, or the syllabus that you would get at the start of class. You're gonna start with your core lessons and then progressively move forward. So lesson one has these aspects. Lesson two, right, they might start to add things in and then you get to lesson four. Now, you might be curious, what am I getting myself into? If you click show menu, it's going to show you what all the different units are, right? So if you are someone who maybe has a little bit, a little bit of experience, right, with a language, you might be curious, you might want to jump around to see what's in, say, unit two, okay? Now, it's not allowing me to get started because I have shown that I can do absolutely nothing with the German language, right? So it's telling me I need to get started right here, and they're not even going to let me, you know, <laughs> they're not even going to let me go to unit two without seeing what I can do. There's a couple of other things here. Um, you know, like I said, you can edit your profile if you need to change your password. Um, a Achievements is just going to attract, uh, track, excuse me, what you've done so far. Um, and then, of course, you can sign out, right? So um, if you want to get started with another language, you will see that, you know, basically you can do that the next time you log in. You use the same username, same password, and then of course you can choose down here a different language to get started with. I want to show you. Um, I hope I don't make I hope I don't make Rosetta Stone mad at me, but I just want to show you what this looks like. So I mentioned before that I had already engaged with um, French. I had already set myself up for that. So you'll see that if I click into French and see, it's very happy now to just kind of let me be doing these two languages at the same time. Right, so here I am in French. Again, I can hit, you know, um, show menu 
and I could simultaneously be doing these two languages at the same time, um, if that's your thing. <laughs> now, how would you use something like Rosetta Stone? Because obviously the school has language classes. Um, there's a couple of reasons um, why you would want to use this, right? Um, um, I think that especially for folks that are in ESL, this is a great way to practice English. English is one of the number one languages that Rosetta Stone, that um, learners are engaging with on Rosetta Stone. So if you want additional conversation practice, reading practice in English, this is a great way to get to it. It's very user friendly and easy and easy to log on to. Um, you might be somebody who has a particular interest, maybe in a culture, um, and you would like to just engage with the language. Um, you're already working here as staff or you're a student or a faculty member, right? There's no extra cost to you to, to use Rosetta Stone. Um, if you were going to buy this on your own, it can be kind of expensive. So that's a, that's a nice little perk that you're getting from the library. Um, and then, of course, all of us are dreaming of that day, right, where we can travel again. And you might want to get yourself... <laughs> prepared for a new country um, so you can say hello and thank you and please let me have a croissant, right? Um, that's another reason why you might want to use Rosetta Stone. So super easy, super fun to get started. Um, again, if you have any questions about Rosetta Stone, if you have any questions about LinkedIn Learning, um, I think I have reached the end of um, what I had wanted to go over today. I guess, again, I'll just reiterate, if, if somebody, if no one has a question, I'll just reiterate, um, some of you might have, uh, some of you, you know, might want to use like your personal email, like a Yahoo or a Gmail address. Um, both of these, uh, well, I should say Rosetta Stone absolutely needs you to use your hccc.edu email. Um, LinkedIn, to kind of get that initial inroad, you just need to sign in using HCCC. They're not going to ask you to change your, you know, existing email um, on your LinkedIn account. So no worries about that. It's just going to be linking them together. But in order to access both of them, we're going to have that interstitial page where it just asks you to log in like you would um, on the portal page. So um, I know there's there is some questions about emails. Um, so just get that out of the way. There's one question. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you mentioned that the lesson I took in LinkedIn could be <laughs> safe. Yeah. Do you, you, you want to see where that is? Can you, can you show that to me? Because I took a lot of lessons in LinkedIn, but I didn't know I could save it. Yeah, so basically, Amorfina, every time you start something, it's gonna like kind of save it. So let me um, let me get into LinkedIn Learning again real quick. So if you see like on mine, because I always have like a bunch of things that I've started and I just never you know continue them. So one is you can come over here to in progress. Okay. Okay. Some, okay. Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And then here's saved. Now. Um, that's sort of like just what I've done right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also, you can go to my learning, okay? Mm -hmm. And my learning gives you the full rundown of everything that you've started, right? Oh, okay. so I kind of use, I personally use in progress as my saved only because I always like start a little bit and then it just stays in this list. Saved is like you truly went in and you did that, that thing that I was showing you before where you just like, uh -huh. you hit the little, you hit like the little flag. Yeah. and it will save it but if you like start watching a video and something it's going to put it into your in progress now okay. let's say like you don't want it anymore right you can always remove it like you started watching something by accident you can just get rid of it so if okay. you want to if you want to go and find the things that you started again uh -huh. go to my learning and in progress is in this progress. first tab oh, okay okay then. okay thanks so much for for joining me for this first one this is exciting yeah, I didn't know Link, LinkedIn offers so much. There is so much in LinkedIn. Like it's almost, it's borderline overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, but it's very, very good. And I highly recommend it. You can, you can really teach yourself a lot of stuff that you can put onto your, your resume. You know, okay, great. I did, you know, I, I taught myself HTML or I taught myself, you know, accounting basics, you know what I mean? Like you can put it in there because you, you've, you've learned the skill. Um, oh, really? I oh have yeah, why not? Class. I mean, you, I have an accounting class, so that will help. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, oh, and, and LinkedIn is another one. So I was saying for Rosetta Stone, it's great for ESL students, right? Um, but like LinkedIn is good too. If you're in a course and, um, you know, it's like accounting, right? And like you're, you're struggling with, you know, Quicken, right? 
there's probably a LinkedIn course on Quicken that you can go and maybe, and maybe for whatever reason, maybe that, um, the way they explain it or the fact that they have lots of up-to-date videos, maybe it's just easier to understand, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, all it does is kind of enhance the learning that you're receiving through a professor here at school. And what's great mm -hmm. is, right, it's all free for you while you're a student, right? So awesome. get as mm -hmm. much as you can. <laughs> yes. yes, thank you. Great. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Take you are care. welcome. You are welcome. Thank you. All right. Take care.